what drugs do is they create very, very strong memories. And if you do have that vulnerability, those strong memories are generated faster, and then they will drive your behaviors in an automatic way. That's really what addiction is all about. Even though you no longer want to take them, and even though the drugs no longer are even pleasurable, it's almost like a hunger that has grown in your body and, and you want it and you just cannot stop it. It's a, it's a need, it's experienced as a need. As our brain is developing, you are driven to learn, you are driven to create connections. It's physically changing and drugs directly modify it in ways that they are actually optimizing that reward system to motivate and not a behavior that is for survival, but a behavior that ultimately can destroy a person's life. And that's exactly why, why kids are more vulnerable. Their brain has not developed. One of them is the possibility of using vaccines to actually treat nicotine, cocaine, heroin. We also have a vaccine for fentanyl. We also have a vaccine being developed for methamphetamine. And the idea is you actually generate antibodies, you get vaccinated and you generate antibodies against the drug. So the antibodies bind to the drug and by binding, they interfere with it getting into the brain. So even if you take drugs, you actually are not going to get high. So in animal models, we can actually treat very nicely animals, whether they are addicted to heroin or, or cocaine. The problem in humans has been to actually translate those vaccines because the immune system of rats is very different from that of humans. The treatment of addiction actually requires a multi-pronged approach that actually cannot just rely on medication. I, I would, would be wonderful if we had an antibiotic like and you sort of said you recover and you're cured. But what happens when a person is addicted, a lot of things happen in their life and they disrupt their family, they disrupt their work. And as a result of that, they start to withdraw and that makes them actually much less able to get social support. Social support is very important for our well-being and social withdrawal and rejection is a very stressful um, effect that actually further hinders the function of your, your executive function. So, and that's why criminal justice system incarceration does not work. You're isolating someone and putting them in very stressful condition and that will degrade their ability to actually exert self-control. So therapeutic interventions engage the individual and in a way to try to, of course, strengthen the areas that are affected by repeated drug use, such as the frontal cortex, while at the same time trying to help the individual integrate into their social system and their family.